This painting was one of the beginnings of the so-called second uh, series, having to do with uh, second chakra energies. And the color associated with the second uh, chakra was orange. The element that was connected with it was water. And the shape association was something round. And also part of the center of the second chakra energy is the center of our creativity and also of our sexuality. For me it had some kind of a shamanistic feel. I could feel the energy off of it and then that more or less became the jumping off point for the second series. So one of the challenges that I was uh, wanting to pursue when, when I was creating a second series was to work pretty consistently with diptychs or triptychs, but primarily diptychs. Uh, I just wanted the exercise and for whatever reason it just felt right for me to have that little extra challenge, uh, more negative space as I said, and to come in from the bottom and the edges with the more strong color, uh, slightly uh, more available texture and to work with that slight uh, circular motif again. One of the things that, that um, uh, I found really fascinating was his chakra series where he, where he took his yoga and uh, incorporated that with his artwork uh, via the color. He's, he was always furtively writing down chants and mantras and and uh, stealing the, the, the mantra sheets when we'd have them in meditation class, and then he would apply them into his artworks. We talked before about uh, pivot points or pivot projects, and uh, the chant series to me has been one of those projects that I have really, truly loved. Some were sayings or quotes that I've hung on to for you know, 20, 30, 40 years in some cases. Others were experiences um, like the one that I have here on the easel. And that was for a lecture that I went to see a couple of summers ago from the very famous uh, Vietnamese uh, Buddhist uh, priest, Thich Nhat Chan. And as he was talking to the crowd, he had said something very simple and it was so beautiful and profound, I thought and so effective for me that I've used it hundreds of times since, usually on the streetcar, where I'm being annoyed by passengers or by how foolish somebody else's attitude is. And then he had said something about just think about when you breathe in, realize that you are alive. And when you breathe out, realize that you have a body. When you breathe in, realize that you have suffered. When you breathe out, realize that others have suffered too. When you breathe in, think about how you can ease your suffering. And when you breathe out, think of how to ease suffering of others. And it is incredibly effective. In a few seconds, you can just absolutely just change your blood chemistry, for lack of a better word, um, and to really just put yourself in a different kind of zone. And uh, they were such beautiful words of wisdom that I decided that they were worthy to write down. And so. And then, of course, then artistically, uh, or in my own creativity, was how to present those words. What kind of surface, uh, what kind of a patina or painted surface was I going to create? Uh, so for the most part, for almost all of them, I've used very heavy 300 pound uh, watercolor paper just because it has a buffalo hide kind of texture to it, uh, almost like a tablet. And then each of the colors or the mark making or the patina changes slightly for each one. Almost all of them are consistently watercolor. Watercolor, I think, is such a beautiful medium and it gets so maligned into being not worthy, sentimental, um, and I wanted to use it in a fresh manner. Um, and then sometimes also using uh, mixed media so that it could be ink. Um, or different types of writing tools that are used on top of it. Uh, but that was part of my thinking process, was to use watercolor in a different way, maybe make it a little more edgy. 
So this was one that I had done recently and it just says souls uh, over and over and over again. Um, but I had also used some mixed media of a lithograph image that I had on fabric and I'd always liked that fragment of, uh, of prints um, so I wanted to include it somehow and so I thought well, it might be an idea to burn the rudimentary shape of a head out of it. Then I thought well it needed to be actually physically burnt in other areas to create less preciousness, uh, a little bit more of something that had survived something, even putting candle wax or beeswax on top of it as well. Um, it just all felt like it was necessary to make it look less uh, precious. And so it feels as though they have survived a near disaster, um, exactly without being lost in a fire or uh, remnants that have been there, or perhaps just you know a careless use of a candle flame. Um, so all of that is part of it, and I think it does add to the, uh, what you might consider a faux artifact uh, feel to them. And uh, this is traditional lithography, so working off of an image off of a uh, stone. So the image is drawn and painted onto a stone and then printed. Uh, in this case, they're working off of active grounds. So the painting is the active ground and then printing on top of it. Same thing in this case. This is a gel skin on top of a lithograph, on top of an active ground. This is a pure lithograph, small lithograph. Also seen lithograph as well, as is this. Another lithograph with lots of drawing activity. Lithograph on an active ground. Lithograph on an active crown with collage. Collage and lithograph. Collage and lithograph again. This is a lino cut print. Um, I love doing lithography, and for a number of years there was a collective that worked together. Um, that was probably the most pure creative experience I've ever had. Uh, there was camaraderie, laughter, creativity that was tangible, and we were there to make prints, of course, um, but it was really something beyond that. That was about the most beautifully magical creative experience I think that I've ever had. Uh, and it was consistent for oh, probably 18 years or so. And these are a series of small lithographs on vintage wallpaper. Must in every home. I think a must in every home. <laughs> Come down and get yours right now. <laughs> the ladies from Home Depot. I believe so. <laughs> feels very much like an obsession. Creativity, I think, in a way, is akin to survival. I think it's a way of making sense of all of the trials and tribulations that life can throw at you. I think it's a way to survive. Life is a beautiful thing. It makes me feel as though I'm engaged in it and that I do have a particular voice and that there's a, a real tangible grasping of the essence of life, um, not just living it, but thriving through it. There's the self-doubt. I think all artists stand on the quicksand of self-doubt. Um, and. There's the fragile self-worth and opinion, and I think that there's the inner dialogue, um, which is 
omnipresent and uh, is often very, it's often not friendly. Um, thinking that perhaps you're not worthy, you're not good enough, you're a fraud, uh, you know, all of those things that are quite nasty. Yeah. And how do you handle it? I think by being true to the process of it and really, if you can, not trying to equate success or creativity through sales or through reviews or through comments that other people make, but really just in the execution of the work and the feeling of satisfaction that that gives you beyond accolades. In that meditative space of where you really and perhaps finally shut your mind off from all the other external chatter and the internal dialogue and all of that, whether we manage it for a few seconds or for a few minutes or for an hour, there is that sustained moment of where your mind shuts off and you're capable of it. Um, I find the same thing with an art practice is that all of the other extraneous influences seem to fall by the wayside and then you are just in that zone for that moment, however long that is, five minutes, five hours. And particularly with the chant series, I felt like I was meditating um, because it was such a compulsive, repetitive process with it. I just had this big roll of plaster bandage uh, in my supply kit and I thought well, I'll just use it just as a whim to see if it ignited any kind of imagery or idea. So once, the, once I started to wrap the dolls I realized that I was making mummies. It hadn't been my intention of course but that's what I was doing. I had made 10 in the, originally um, and then I ended up making I think in the end 85 or 95 of them. So these were images or symbols of effigies of death, but really coming from my own interest of imagery from Day of the Dead. The symbol of the skull and the skeleton, they're seen as a beginning and not an end. There was something about that I find very comforting, universal, symbolic. It's also my own personal interest in culture and the cycle of life and how things often repeat. This particular one is a scarf that I wore for 20 years that I loved but became so threadbare that I decided to use it for the adornment. Um, the skulls I had picked up in Chinatown years ago and had been fascinated with them and just kept them for a particular moment to use and then the opportunity presented itself. Kind of yeah. been passe. Why are you putting it there? Uh, are we gonna? Well, I'll put it there. Okay, for now. As I said, yeah. we're gonna go. I oh, really yeah. like that. Flowered. Yeah, that's great. Reflowered. Because that's not funny. Okay, so that's great. I really yeah. like that okay, a lot. So watercolor and uh, vintage wallpaper. That's fantastic. Okay. That's it. That's good. It's amazing how the, how the vintage wallpaper does give it that, that Japanese... Yeah. Um, oh, that's nice too, with the chair. That's really nice, so definitely a maybe. Yeah, maybe? Yeah, oh, there's wallpaper in there too. There's wallpaper in that. I think it's really interesting that he, he works on them as a series, studying those things conceptually <laughs> from an artist's perspective. Exploring and also playing with it, right? I mean, he, he can be quite playful with, with the themes, right? And, and themes that are dark which speaks to the human condition. Okay. He gets so engaged with that, and, and it be, it's fun, right? It's fun, and, and therefore very kind of inviting. That's gorgeous. I want we that. Were, yeah, that is so nice. Oh, Brahma? Uh, Sumerian gods. OK. That's interesting. With an erect penis. Yes. Okay. These are the fertile, what are these, the big... Uh... 
What are the Sumerian gods? Do we know what the what are we Well, this saying? is the uh, the lion eagle uh, consuming the um, the god. I think it's the god of earth. I believe. Oh, that's another beauty. That's, that oh, God, is so beautiful. Oh yeah. That's gorgeous. It's just been a fantastic experience for me to be able to just play any role with him as an artist. I love his art, the different things that he produces. I like that too. Is that, is that Buddha? That's Buddha, yeah. yeah. I like that a lot. I remember years ago thinking and uh, how clear and how profound it was to hear a statement from Lucien Freud um, who had said, I get the paintings that I get, not the paintings that I want. And I really love that uh, because you have this idea of what is going to happen or how they're going to turn out and then they turn out how they turn out, kind of like our lives. Mm -hmm.